People, it's that time, main event time, Adi Oladipo in the zone HQ, by the way. Look at this snazzy background. Look at all this. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Do you, can you name? Can you name these people? Can you? You should be able to. Gay Garb Masasi, uh, Bellator champion, former unified heavyweight champion, Anthony Joshua. Uh, remember, this is sponsored by William Hill. Proud to have William Hill as our sponsors. So many special guests today. We're going to talk about, obviously, why I was in Vegas and New Orleans. Alex Aljo is going to join us to talk all things Premier League because it's been a crazy, crazy few weeks in the Premier League. And Lee Phelps is going to join us as well to get the latest odds on those big games in the Premier League. But, as you guys know, I wasn't here. I was across the pond. I was in New Orleans first for Misfits. We'll talk about that in a second. But I was in Las Vegas, the most important part of that journey for the big one. Javante Davis versus Ryan Garcia. Arguably, in fact, no argument about it, definitely the biggest fight of the year. Trust me, I was there. I can confess. By the way, let me tell you this. I was in the VVIP room. Yeah, you know Addy doesn't do VIP. VVIP room. You know who was in there with me? Conor McGregor, Mike Tyson, Manny Pacquiao. And the awkward thing is, this is a true story. I'm telling you now, no lies. Conor McGregor walked past me and he like... I said, Connor, I didn't expect him to respond to me because everyone's saying Connor. And he put his hand out and I didn't have my hand out. So I missed the dab. I, I, I missed it. I missed the opportunity. But we'll get him again. We'll get him again. But look, honestly, fantastic night in Vegas. Um, one of the biggest. And I've been out there for a few of them. I've been out there for Golovkin Canelo. I've been out there for Canelo versus Dimitri Bivol. This topped the lot. It really did. So what we're going to do now is look back on that fight. Uh, it was a fight that had so many interesting moving parts to it. Ultimately, you guys know who won the fight, Javante Davis, seventh round, TKO to the body, but there were a few bits to it as well. All right, let's get into this. Again, one of the best atmospheres I've seen, and the reason why it's one of the best atmospheres is because it was split. This is very rare. When you go to a Canelo fight in Vegas, Canelo has 95% of the crowd. This, 50-50 split, so great atmosphere. All right, first round, Ryan Garcia is flying. I mean, he's honestly going for the knockout. He's letting that left hand, and we know how important that left hook is. He's letting it go at will, but nothing landing. Nothing landing. And I'm watching it. I was lucky enough to watch it name drop. Sean Porter, me and Sean Porter are, are, are watching it together. And Sean Porter's saying, okay, he's starting to really read this left now. It's Javante Davis. He's reading it, he's reading it. Bang! So Ryan throws three lefts at the same time. Javante dodges the first one, avoids the second one, then really ducks him for the third one, then lands a peach, and I mean peach of a left hand. Ryan Garcia down, crowd goes mental. To be fair to Ryan, got his legs, got his strength in his legs, got back up. But from then on, it changed the tide of the fight. He then started fighting... I don't want to use the word scared, cautious. That's the right word. He started fighting cautious. And you felt like it was just inevitable that Javante was going to get to him. <clears throat> In the second round, Ryan again swinging, Javante landing clean. Javante now knows he's got a target. And the, the biggest mistake I think that Ryan made was Ryan started fighting to Javante's height. Javante is about four inches shorter than Ryan. And whereas Ryan should be standing up... To, Look at me, the expert boxer. But where Ryan should be standing high using his jab, he's now fighting low. He's fighting Javante's height. And then for Javante, that's just, you're in his wheelhouse. <clears throat> Nothing really happened in round three. It was more of a feel-out round. Both fighters having a look, getting their second wing back because the first two rounds were so fast. Round four was interesting. It was interesting for a few reasons. Ryan on the attack. Finally... Ryan started throwing that right hand. He's famed for the left. We didn't see much of the right. We started to see the right in round four. Joe Goosen, Ryan's cornerman, trainers, obviously told him, okay, start firing on the right because Javante is reading your left. So we started to see that. But what we also saw is Javante finally start to push Ryan back. The first three rounds were Ryan being the aggressor. All of a sudden, Javante is like, okay, I felt your power. There isn't much power there. I'm going to start pushing you back. Uh, so that was round four. Round five, very, very similar. But something key happened in round five. Javante started to whip to the body. I started to notice it. He started to look at the body of Ryan Garcia and decide, okay, you can take it up here. Can you take it down there? It's funny now. We all know, right, that Ryan went into that fight supposedly with a cracked rib. 
Javante definitely knew about it as well. So round five was when Javante started that body attack. And it had, obviously, it's, it worked, didn't it? Because round seven, we know what happened. Round six, again, both of them having a look. You know, it's funny, actually. I went to Ryan Garcia's after party. And Ryan Garcia, and hopefully this is okay for me to say, Ryan Garcia said throughout the fight, all he could hear was Floyd Mayweather chirping. He said, literally, all we could hear, couldn't hear anyone else apart from Floyd Mayweather screaming. And it kind of put him off a little bit. He even said, and he's come out and said this, I got bored in the fight. I'm like, dude, you got bored in the fight? You got bored in the biggest fight of your career? 21,000 T-Mobile Arena? Crazy. But what you could see in round six was Javante starting to get comfortable. Javante starting to get really comfortable. And a comfortable Javante Davis is one of the best fighters on the planet, one of the most dangerous fighters on the planet. And there is a reason why he's unbeaten. Javante comfortable, a problem. Round seven. All right, you guys know what happened in round seven. It's the big round. They come out. By this time, by the way, the scores are quite close. Although Javante's had a knockdown, Ryan's won a couple of rounds. So you could maybe, you could maybe say 4-2 Javante. <clears throat> Some people were saying 3-3. But round seven is when Ryan got a bit too happy. Got a bit too happy. He landed a couple of shots and he thought, okay, I've got you. The worst thing is Javante off the ropes. Javante off the ropes is like, a, like an animal trapped and caged. Ryan thought he could land that big left hook. He got too happy with it, people. Far too happy. He landed a right, left hook. Right, left hook. Right. And I'm thinking, wait a minute. I can see what you're doing. If I can see it, little old Adi Oladipo on the green chair, Javante Davis has worked this one out easily. And Javante read it. As he's throwing, this is Ryan's. As Ryan's throwing that right, he leaves his body wide open. Bang. Javante lands that to the body. That was it. Now, look, a lot of people have said he quit, didn't quit. Look, I've never had a liver shot, so I can't tell you. All I can say is speaking to fighters that were there, some were like body shots literally paralyze you. Some were saying a fight of this magnitude, you've got to get up. One thing Ryan did after the knockdown, got up, didn't he? He got up, at re he got up on the 10. The referee was like, one, two. I thought, okay, he's going to get up surely. But then on 10... He got up, and I'm like, one second. If you can get up on 10, it means you can get up. Whether or not you wanted to continue is another thing, but it means you could have got up. And look, only Ryan will know the answer to whether or not he could have continued. It was a great fight, a disappointing ending. And I guess the question is really now, what next for both? If you're Javante, what next for you? Is it Shakur Stevenson? Is it, if it, is it Devin Haney? Is there anyone else out there? Those are the two big fights at 135. If you're Ryan... One thing we know is clear, Ryan's going to 140 pounds. He's not going to start 135, he's far too big. Honestly, he's a guy that could go eventually to 147, maybe even 154. He's going to go 140. I think the big thing for Ryan, though, is what do you do with your training setup? Joe Goosen. Didn't work. Technically, Ryan wasn't the greatest. I think, I think, hear me out before you guys shoot me down. I think there's an argument to go back to Eddie Reynoso and Canelo. That was the best Ryan Garcia ever seen. The, the Ryan Garcia that beat Luke Campbell under Eddie Reynoso and Canelo in the camp was the best Ryan. This Ryan, it all got a bit too much for him. So look, great fight. We all loved it. Everyone loved it. The numbers were crazy. Trending on social media, which is what we want. Boxing needs to be in the limelight again. These young kids bought it. And I have no problem winning when the best fight the best. I have a problem, though, on how you lose. I think Ryan Garcia will look back on that performance thinking, I could have done a bit more. What do you guys think of it? Let me know. Make sure you tell me. Remember, you can tweet me, as you guys always do, at a underscore Oladipo1. Tweet us at the zone Boxing. Let us know how the fight played out for you. All right, enough boxing chat. Uh, Alex Aljo is in the building. Uh, presenter, broadcaster, everything. Everything. Everything <laughs> when it comes to football. What do you think of the set? I love it. You think it's great. Set? Best jersey there? I'm going to go with this retro West Ham West Ham, can't be that. Dagnum love Motors. It. Dagnum Motors, you know how old that feels like now? Dagnum Motors supporting. From your time, not mine. <laughs> it is my era. It's my era. You can probably tell by the greys. Sponsoring the Premier League. Let, let's let's um let's come on, let's do a, a full Premier League roundup because so much has happened. Every time me and you have recorded, someone's been sacked. Another manager. Has someone's gone. been sacked. And we normally get it right as well. We have been spot on. You did say Vieira. Yeah, I Unfortunately, did. Unfortunately, I think um, we mentioned Rogers. Yeah. Conte, did we? Did you say Conte? I'm not it's sure. It's weird I'm how Conte's sure. been sacked but since we, we met, and now his predecessor's been sacked as well. It's like everyone's yeah. just. It's, it's, it's a brutal, incredible. brutal world. Our Spurs 
five nil down at St James's Park after twenty minutes. Unbelievable. I think no one saw that coming, did they? No. The Tottenham fans that had travelled all the way up to Newcastle certainly didn't see that coming. What do you make of the refunds? Money being given back? I think they had to. Right? Most of them only saw care. twenty do minutes fans of the game. About that? I think so. Yeah? I think so. Obviously, they'd mm. rather have seen a yeah. Tottenham victory. Yeah. Mm. And obviously, lots of people are annoyed as well the fact that the Tottenham players mm. switched shirts. The Newcastle players. You know what? That's a disgrace. I understand why the Newcastle players would want a Tottenham shirt to remember that game. Yeah, yeah. But, but why would... Yeah, I feel like else. they should have left it be like, yeah, I'm As right. that was happening, <laughs> the I could picture was Roy King. Because you know he hates all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. hates all of it. But for me, for a team fully loaded as Tottenham, I'm not, I know there's some players that probably shouldn't be there, not good enough. That's tools down. Mm. There's no way Newcastle could be 5-0 up after 20 minutes. It's a disgrace. It's a disgrace, but look... Well, Cellini still... said it's the worst performance he'd ever seen. From, from anything. From anything, from anyone, yeah. from any team. He's got but surely he has to take some of the blame as well. He has, hence the why players he's as been well. gone. Uh, and Daniel Levy actually came out and said it was his responsibility. He really? took full blame. Yeah, he came out and said responsibility is mine. Interesting. And I was at the training ground the other day and I, I, asked, those um, connections. I asked Clement Longley actually, who didn't play, he didn't come off the bench. And I said, look, Daniel Levy said it's his responsibility, but how much responsibility do you players feel? And oh. he said a huge amount, of course. Of good. course. Okay, that's good. They've underperformed throughout the season. Yeah, it's crazy it's how they could still make Champions League. That, that's how they crazy could. I know they like could. they're way off it now in mentally, but in terms of points on the Massive game against Manchester United coming huge. up. Huge. Win that and they could. And it's a season of success. Unthinkable maybe. that Tottenham <laughs> can make Champions League. Uh, Newcastle though, straight there. I think they potentially could do it um, in the next couple of games. Um, some big games tonight, but I do want to go back on yesterday. Yep. Just because all I want to focus on, if we can, is Aston Villa and Unai Emery. What is going on? So they were 16th. Yeah. when Unai Emery took over and now they're fifth. Absolutely incredible. <laughs> no team in the Premier League has won more games than Aston Villa since Unai Emery took over either. Mm. The same number as Arsenal. Yeah. And they're the same players as that were playing under Steven Gerrard. Do you think Villa should be nervous? Like, and do you feel like they should almost tie down Unai Emery to like a five-year contract now? Well, they get Europa League. He yeah. loves winning the Europa League. And he, he wins it for fun. They'll go Villa win the Europa, in the Europa League. League. <laughs> astonishing. Honestly, astonishing. And I feel like, look, this is no slight on my... The, the, the love of my life, Steven Gerrard. But it's the same players as you say. Yeah. So I do wonder what this means for him. Like every time Unai Emery gets three points more on the board, I'm like, it doesn't help Steven Gerrard. Mm. It doesn't help him at all. Mm. And you'd think, obviously, coming in such a legend, a legend in the Premier yeah. League, the players would have had so much respect for him as well. Why didn't it work? Mm. Why didn't it work? What does it say about Steven Gerrard as a manager? What does it say about English managers? I, look, I know Eddie Howe's doing fantastic. Yeah, so Frank can, Lampard as well. Frank Lampard, Graham Potter, mm. Stephen Gerrard, all like being held as the next best thing. Mm -hmm. All of them, I don't want to say failed, it's, it's a harsh yeah. word, but I've just said it, I've just said it, haven't I? Failed. Said it. <laughs> all failed, but I haven't they? And Unai Emery's one of six Spanish managers in the Premier League as well. Yeah. All right, we don't just talk Premier League on this show, we talk everything. We talk everything. We even go down to the National League, because that's what we do. Uh, maybe this might just be a one-off though, I'm not quite sure. Wrexham are into League Two. Uh, it's worked, right? The gamble has worked. They, they spent a lot of money. Players have come down from League One to play for them. And right now, they're a team that everyone seems to love. Yeah, I think even if you don't love football, there's some people watching in National League. They've never watched football in their life before and they're suddenly tuning into Wrexham. Because we all love Ryan Reynolds, that's we why. We all love Ryan Reynolds. And let's not forget Rob McElhenney as well. I yeah, think he uh, gets no, forgotten. Yeah, it, completely he? gets forgotten. You know why? Because no one can <laughs> pronounce his surname. You just done very Rob well. McElhenney. 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 Uh, McElhenney. I think go. people said it was a publicity stunt to begin with, yeah. but they've proved how much they care. They yeah. love it, don't they? Yeah, they do. And Ben Foster's only played a few games with them, but he's come out and said that he's never felt this way. He's played over 500 games, yeah. played for Manchester United in huge games, and then he said he hasn't had a feeling like this before. He says yeah. Wrexham feels like home. Mm. He absolutely adores it. And look, what they've done, like you get owners coming in, especially in like <clears throat> Premier League and Championship, where fans hate the owners. They're taking money out of the club, they're not investing, yep. all this stuff. Every single fan, there was a poll actually about it. I think like 11,000 votes, it was like 99.7%. And I'm like, I'm gonna track down the point three. <laughs> I wanna know, I wanna know <laughs> yeah, what you're not happy about. What, uh, what, 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 what are you Reynolds? upset about? Are yeah. you okay? Do you need your head inspected? It's crazy, but not well done to them. They're, they're really so involved as well, aren't they? They're right in the middle they're of there. it, on the pitch of them, getting beer thrown over it's, them. It's crazy. Well, you know, you know what's really crazy? They've got, they've got this bloody friendly with Manchester United. Yeah, they're playing it, it, Chelsea as well. What? Playing Chelsea. It's, it's an unbelievable story. In North story. Carolina in the summer. Some, like, they're going to try and get Gareth Bale I want to know how now. far the story can go, though. Well, did you see Gareth Bale? He, uh, he sent a video to them. 
What's saying I need a round of golf with you to Rob McElhenney. Yeah. And Rob McElhenney said, yeah, I'm going to spend four hours convincing you to sign for Wrexham and come out of retirement. Gareth Bale Imagine. Me too. Gareth Bale. <laughs> Don't have his body But get promoted straight away. People are already talking about them playing in the Premier League. See, this, okay, this is the point I was going to ask you because we know to play in the Premier League, no disrespect to the money they've invested, it needs to go to hundreds of millions, doesn't it? But that jump from the champ to the prem, or even League One to champ. Look at some of the teams that are in League One, by the way. Mm-hmm. Like Ipswich are in League One. Mm-hmm. Hopefully they'll get promoted. Well, they've got Ed Sheeran investing in them there, yeah. right? <laughs> okay, okay, it's I see what's going on. Them. Do you think they'll go though, back to back, Wrexham? I'd I love think to know so. what the odds are. I think so. It's actually it's easier to, for them to get promoted now next season than to get out of the National League, right? Mm. They've been down there in the National League since 2008. Yeah. So it's hard to get out of the National League. But I think, yeah, they'll go straight up. All right, should we talk Chelsea? Shall we? Might as well. Isn't <laughs> Let's it? talk Chelsea. What a mess. What a mess. Chaos. Just, are we going for Mayhem. that again? <laughs> <laughs> Turmoil. Distress. Honestly, no, it's, um, it's bad, isn't it? It's, it's funny because when Lampard was appointed, I remember saying to someone, it's so bad he could get sacked before the end of the season. I said, if they don't win every game, mm. or at least win a couple, and they've lost all four, and they've lost all four. scored one goal. Yeah. All right, let's talk about the managers being linked, mm-hmm. being replaced. I mean, Company's just... name was linked the other day. Wasn't it was. I saw Vincent it was. Company. It was. And Nardlesman. what a job he's done at Burnley. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Unbelievable job. But I think it is going to be Mauricio Pochettino. Yeah, he's so good. I think the Chelsea fans are happy about the appointment. Really? I think the Tottenham fans may be not so happy. Yeah. But I think it's the right profile. Right profile. It's weird how a Tottenham manager being sacked is going to Chelsea. I know he's gone to Paris Saint-Germain. Whereas yeah. before, it's no disrespect to Spurs here. It's if you get sacked by Chelsea, you can go Spurs. Mm-hmm. But not the other way. We've, we haven't seen it the other way. Sacked by Spurs, go Chelsea. Sacked by Spurs, go Chelsea. It's normally the other way, isn't it? You think of the managers, Conte, Mourinho, yeah. Vs, Boas. It's been the other way around. It's been the other way around, hasn't it? Yeah. Um, so maybe it's going to work this time. <laughs> he'll, I think he'll do a good job. Yeah, I think also he's obviously used to dealing with big names, big stars yeah. at Paris Saint-Germain. They need a manager. I think Graham Potter didn't have the respect that he needed from those world-class players i'd love to know though how we've gone from nagelsman was favorite yeah how we what's happened i'd love to know what's happened something didn't go right in one of the meetings i yeah. think i know right? you know i don't know i don't Alex, know i don't I know, know, you know i don't know no? i don't know i don't know okay but i think i think pochettino's a good fit he said he's going to focus on the homegrown talent mm. the academy players which chelsea need to do yeah they haven't done they they all get sold yeah no they do i mean Where it, could be, go? it could be good for mason mount <laughs> Yeah. Coming for players like that, Mason Mount, Conor Gallagher, yeah. they might Mason get a Mount run. Mason Mount might actually stay now. Yeah. Um, oh, but yeah, I think he's, he loves London, Poch loves London. I mm. hope it goes well. Yeah. Uh, but it seems like a good appointment. You know, like, just, I'm not even taking a mick here, because I know you're Chelsea, I'm not taking a mick. You could get relegated. You could be, no, 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 wait, wait, hear me out. I know, like, there's the, the famous, what is it, the 40 points to cut off, right? <laughs> and they're not quite you're, there. You're on 39. <laughs> <laughs> you're not there. Almost there. You're not there. Almost there. You could get relegated. <sighs> Imagine. <laughs> would Potch would Potch then want to come I think, come there, I think there is a genuine fear though it's like genuine not, not that genuine but there's a fear that okay we just need to get three points on the board yeah. quickly yeah and the longer you go without the win the less belief the less confidence and those teams below you they're Playing all like well, picking points goals. up and yeah like who knew Southampton would go to the Emirates and get a point you know, everyone's picking up points yeah. and fighting and scratching and you boys on King's Road I don't think they're going to get relegated. No, I think I'm pretty relegated. sure they're not going to get relegated. Mm. That would be terrible, wouldn't it? No, well, it's already been a dreadful season. Depends who you support. I'm not quite sure you support. No, Chelsea have. Look, I want the Premier League's a lot better place when all the big boys are firing. Yeah. So next season, I want to see six or seven. Yeah. And Chelsea, are one of those six or seven. Well, look, they've got Enzo Fernandez, who's a been World okay. Cup winner. Imagine going from winning the he's World Cup. He's been okay, Cup hasn't he? To uh, he's, Has he been, he's been the best player. He's been a shining Mudrick's light been. in a very, very dark Mudrick. tunnel. What's happened to him? <laughs> Well, I think, again, with Mudrick, there was a lot of pressure on him to perform. Yeah. And his confidence is so low, you can see it when he's out there on the pitch. I think he's had a really tough time. And I think he's had a tough time settling into London. Can I forget, confess forget these players come and don't know anyone, don't really know the language. They've got that on top of not playing well on the pitch. It, it can be tough for them. I know people don't feel sorry for no. Premier League footballers, but... But it's difficult. It's New difficult. language, settling yeah. in. Yeah, people always say things like, oh, you're on a million a week. I have to confess something. I didn't even know who Mudrick was eight months ago. Now you do. Now I do. That, he's got, so he's gone from no one knew who he was yep. to costing 85 million pounds. Yeah, and he's got a tattoo actually on his neck Has saying it? talent ain't enough. It's true. Interesting. Sums up, sums up. This. Sums up. <laughs> sums him up, doesn't it, really? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, he'll come good next season. I think should, so. Should, 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 obviously, look, we had a little laugh and joke about the relegation, but Chelsea are not going to be in a Chelsea relegation. Chelsea are not going to get relegated. When you look at the table... 
Um, I think me and you spoke about this a few weeks back, and we were like, okay, Palace down. My predictions were wrong. What did you say? Again? I think I said Palace were going to get relegated. Did you then... say Palace were going to get relegated? Yeah, and then I think Roy came in, and wow, unbelievable. Yeah, he's had a, he's had a little revival under yeah. Roy. Yeah, I, I said, and I still think because they're obviously bottom of the team, bottom of the table right now, that Southampton will go. But then look, they were so close to getting all three points against Arsenal. You, you never know. Mm. But I think Southampton are gone. I think so too. <sighs> I think Leicester are gone. I'm whispering it because I think between sure. Leeds and Leicester, and we saw that one all draw. So who's your three? Good then? For what are you thinking team? then? So I'm saying Southampton, Forest, Everton will climb out. They'll be okay. Why? Got, Why are you so sure? Back. Why are you? What's he done? He's done it for two years. Well, uh, he's not. I don't even know. Is he, is he a footballer? Now? He played well. He he played well at um. I was yeah. at Palace the other day. He's, he's, he can put himself about. I think so. He and they desperately need someone to get the goals. Exactly. So, so okay, so you're saying Southampton are going to go. Forest. Forest are going to, yeah, Forest is just. And then, the then between back. Leeds and Leicester. Leeds and Leicester. Huge game coming so up. So Bournemouth are gone now. Bournemouth are okay. Gary and I think Bournemouth are okay. Points, they're gone. Yeah, okay, they're, they're right. okay. So no. I'm looking at the bottom five. Mm. They're separated by six points. They're and all... a couple of big games between those bottom five kind of as well. Yep. Leicester Everton yep. is Huge. enormous. On Monday the 1st. Enormous, gigantic. <laughs> Here we go again. But yeah, look, massive. but they're all big. All these games, are are which is so exciting. Yeah. What a Premier League season it's been for the neutral. If your team isn't Incredible. down there in the relegation battle, I'm a Liverpool if you're fan, not an so I'm fan. not entirely sure it's been a great season for us. But, but, but I'm for, not for a neutral fan, it's been, and it's going to go to the wire. I, I'm going to go Southampton are gone. Leicester are gone. Yeah. And Chelsea, the third team. <laughs> Leeds. <laughs> Leeds. Okay. I think Leeds will go. Yeah, it's not worth so, with Javi Gracia. So you're it's saying Leicester worked. and Leeds are going to go? Leicester and, and Leeds are going to go. And Southampton. So Forest will survive. Forest will just... Just... By the skin of Last their Last game of the season. Yeah. Down to the wire. I think it will be that. Yeah. I think it will be that. But look, exciting, exciting Really chat. exciting. Yeah, and look, I guess this conversation, by the way, could change next week. Mm -hmm. Next week, my whole three could change. My Chelsea relegation theory could change. Arsenal Fickle. not winning the league could change. I'm like that. I, I flow where the wind is. Yeah, it's like a fart in the wind. It goes anywhere. What an <laughs> ending. What an ending. Yeah. What an ending indeed. Alex Aljo, as always. See you in the next one. All right, so we've just had Alex Aljo in the building talking all things Premier League. Why not get some Premier League um, football odds as well? Uh, Lee Phelps joins us uh, from William Hill. Lee, appreciate you coming on, my man, as always. Let's jump straight in. I, I'm, I'm intrigued by this one. Spurs manager like it almost seems to be the one that no one wants to take but look it's a big job what are the odds on the next Spurs manager well you're right it's like I mean it's crazy the situation at Spurs uh, Julian Nagelsmann is a nine to four favorite at the moment the interesting one for me is Vincent Company five to one obviously Burnley boss at the moment I've heard a few whispers around whether Burnley will be able to keep him is it too big a job? Does he want to move down south? But I think that's an interesting one on five to one. Arnie Slot is six to one. Graham Potter, nine to one. I mean, in this day and age, you can lose a job at a big club like Chelsea and suddenly you're okay to go and manage Spurs. Mad one. Brendan Rodgers, nine to one and 11 to one and bigger the rest of them. Yeah, some big names there. Vincent Company would be interesting, right? I mean, what he's done at Burnley. Like, he, he will at least be getting a job based on being successful. All the others have failed in their, in their jobs respectfully. They've all been sacked and they're going to get at least Vincent Company's done well at Burnley. So potentially he could get it. Uh, next Chelsea manager. Now, Alex Aljo is pretty much saying Pochettino's nailed on. How true is that? Well, 16 to 1 on wow. is nailed on in, in bookmaking terms. So yeah, absolutely. Like, you know, that's so short. But we do see in these markets that just because you are 16 to 1 on doesn't mean you get the job. And we see, you know, different managers fluctuating these markets but it looks like it you know 12 to 1 the next biggest one so it's hard to argue against that isn't it 16 to 1 on is about as much as, as a nailed on if you like as you're going to get in these kind of markets yeah that's done and dusted he, he's certainly the next Chelsea manager good luck to him Richard Pochettino be interesting to see how Spurs fans take that but look he's done a great job at Spurs they did sack him so you can't blame him from taking another big job in London all right top four Premier League odds now look I already know look, it will take any, something crazy to, for Man City and Arsenal not to be bankers. But then there's this race now between Brighton, Villa, Manchester United, Spurs, my Liverpool. Hopefully you've got some good odds on them as well. What are the odds for the next, so the next two teams, if you like, to make that top four? 
Well, Manchester United are one to eight, and Newcastle are two to nine. So they're really short prices. And look, they're they're showing consistency, aren't they? Now I know Aston Villa are showing that consistency as well, but who else is really? You know, Aston Villa are a huge price, twenty five to one. Although earlier in the week. They were 50 to 1. So, you know, the, the performances they're putting in under Unai Emery are making people sit up and notice. But you would have to say those odds suggest that it's going to be Manchester United and Newcastle in third and fourth place. Brighton and next in the betting, unbelievable, really, with so few games to go that they're ahead of Liverpool and Tottenham in the betting. But Brighton are 5 to 1, Liverpool 11 to 2, Tottenham 10 to 1. I suppose if Liverpool can start putting some wins together, then there's a chance there. But as it stands at the moment, Brighton are ahead of Liverpool and Spurs, who were 10 to 1 after that defeat to Newcastle at the weekend to get top four. It's unbelievable. What a race, though. Yeah, honestly, what a race. Race for the title, race for top four, race for European places. That's good, but nothing's as good as the race to stay in the Premier League. I mean, it's just changing every single week. Southampton looked like they were going to get three points at the Emirates, took a point. Uh, Bournemouth uh, uh, seem to have got away from it now with Gary O'Neill. So I, I've said, and I'll say to Alex here, for me, I said Southampton are gone. I think I said Leicester will go and Leeds. I, I, I say that with zero confidence. What are the bookmakers saying? Well, it's interesting because Southampton, yeah, 10 to 1 on to go down. Nottingham Forest are 5 to 1 on to go down. Everton, 4 to 5. Then you get Leeds at 6 to 5. So the first team there in the betting who are odds against. And then you've got Leicester at seven to four. Bournemouth at a nine to one. You, maybe maybe Bournemouth are just about there. The interesting thing this this year, I think, is the, is the points total like get safety. You know, in in I think the average over the last twenty seasons is thirty six points. Always it was always forty. Then it was thirty seven. Now it seems to be thirty six. Could be like thirty three, maybe thirty four. Does I've just been speaking to Jermaine Beckford, ex lead striker, played for Everton, played for Leicester, and he couldn't decide between the two of them. I think maybe he doesn't want to, you know, divide his loyalties and kind of, you know, say one or the other. Um, I think it's a really tough one. I think you know there's some huge games coming up, aren't there? Six pointers. There was one, you know, just gone where you know Leeds couldn't quite beat Leicester despite leading one nil. Vardy scored to claw it back. I think it is absolutely wide open. I think if you can find some value, like you just have, with Leicester to go down at seven to four, that's where you need to be looking. There's no, you know, going for man, you know, going for Forest at one to five or going for, you know, Southampton at one to ten. You know, they they look like they're struggling. But uh, yeah, if you think Leicester, go with that. Right, big another big game. Look, they're all big games at this end of the season. Manchester United versus Villa. Now I don't know what Uno Emery is doing. Um, it's 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 incredible the turnaround. Manchester United still going for that top four FA Cup final on the horizon as well. What are the odds on that one? Yeah, eight to eleven Manchester United to win at home. The draw is three to one. Villa hundred to thirty. One of the form sides in the Premier League at the moment, Aston Villa. Yeah, maybe not quite big enough at hundred to thirty to go to Manchester United and, and, and win, but no one would be surprised if they went there and drew at three to one. The draw at Manchester United. Yeah, just because United need to win that doesn't mean they will and the confidence has to be with Aston Villa at the moment I think obviously you know United in good form themselves I know the disappointment in the Europa League but you know they can do anything they want on any given day but personally I think the draw at three to one never like to sit on the fence and go for the draw but just because it's three to one it seems a bit bigger than normal I'd be looking at Villa to get something out of that game at Old Trafford yeah and the final one Arsenal versus Chelsea it will be so Chelsea who've had just the worst season possible to go to the Emirates. And they've, they've got a decent record at the Emirates for them to go there and nick something. Yeah, and Arsenal, like City, just have to keep winning game after game after game now. They drop those points against teams they shouldn't have dropped them against. The odds on to win this game, 3-4 to four to beat Chelsea, which probably isn't a, as big a price as, as you'd expect, maybe. You know, you see other teams, really short prices, Chelsea 100 to 30, the draw 29 to 10. Arsenal simply must win this game for me now. Every game between now and the end of the season, they have to win. I think Chelsea in too too tricky a spot. That mm. you're right. I get what you're saying. That they they you know it would be just like them to go and beat a team like Arsenal. But I think Arsenal win this. It's it's finding that that value in a you know an Arsenal win and a in a Saka goal or you know trying to find the angle in there. Odegaard to assist something around there. But I think Arsenal do win it. Just go and find the value in the win. 
We've had so many big fights on the weekend. We've got another big fight coming up very, very soon. This one in Mexico, Canelo versus John Ryder. Canelo, undisputed, 168-pound champ. What, what, what chance do they give John Ryder? I think he's got a chance, but a slim one. So you've just done that face, Lee. You've just done that face. I, I think you think it's even slimmer than slim, don't you? Yeah, well, it's seven to one, which isn't like, isn't a crazy price. We've seen much shorter prices for, you know, uh, of such bigger prices for, you know, the likes of John Ryder to get a result. Sol Alvarez is 1-14 to 14 here, Canelo, to win this. He's got a fantastic record against everyone, but a particular, he seems to like fighting British, right? He bashes up the Brits all the time, I'm telling you. <laughs> so, you know, 14-1 to 1 only is a big price. He's, he, you know, he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a big favourite in this one. 3-1 to one on to knock Ryder out. Ryder's 14-1 to one to win by stoppage. When you go to decision, can he make it through to the... If he got any chance, right, can he make it all the way through to a points decision? Well, he's 18 to 1 to win on points, which seems unlikely. 11 to 4, Canelo to win on points if Ryder can tough it out and, and manage to get through, you know, the full 12 rounds. 11 to 4 for Canelo to win on points, maybe. But, you know, th there's loads of odds on, you know, various different rounds, you know, the, the kind of grouped rounds. So if you think Ryder does a good job but doesn't quite get to the end, Canelo to win rounds 10, 11 or 12 is 100 to 30. Maybe I'll shout. Canelo to win in rounds 7, 8 or 9 is 12 to 5 as well. But I don't want to, you know, be unpatriotic or anything. But Canelo is, you know, he's fantastic. And I really hope John Ryder can put up a fantastic performance. Um, I'm not sure he can win. Cheers, Lee. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Oh, there are the latest odds from William Hill. Remember, begambleaware.org. All right, my favourite part of the show where we go through some of the questions that you've sent in. Thank you so much before we start to our guest, Alex Aljo, who's just, I mean, she's just incredible when it comes to football, isn't she? And to Lee Phelps giving us the latest odds uh, brought to you by William Hill. All right, remember, get your questions in, by the way. We're going to put out the tweet every single week. So check out for it on Monday or a Tuesday. Hashtag Ask Ade. I will answer anything within reason. I know some of you guys can get very cheeky. But um, here we go. First question has been sent in by Jose Corrales Jr. When can we have Anthony Joshua versus Tyson Fury? The million dollar question. I've been waiting for this fight for like five years. And you know what? Having spoke to AJ a few times, he's desperate for the fight to happen as well. I think Tyson Fury is desperate for the fight to happen as well. It all comes down to pounds and pence, people. Is there enough pounds and pence for both of them? I think there is. Don't quote me. I think we might get to see it early next year. You thought I was going to say this year. No, early next year, I think we're going to get to see it. It's a big fight. Fingers crossed it can happen. All right. Uh, Ringside uh, Fracas says, uh, one fight you could make between a boxer from today and a boxer from the past. And who would you have winning and why? It's got to be Sugar Ray Leonard versus Floyd Mayweather. It just, any other answer's wrong. That's the one we want to see. If anyone says anything else, they don't know about boxing. Um, look, two of my favourite fighters of all time, Sugar Ray Leonard, arguably my favourite fighter of all time, Floyd Mayweather, just a genius. When I get bored, I sit down and I put on YouTube and I watch Floyd Mayweather fights because he is incredible. That fight at 147 would be sensational. Honestly, sensational. And I would pick Floyd Mayweather to win. Hold on. The why is because he's never lost. So I don't know how you beat him. Well, unfortunately, I've seen Sugar Ray Leonard lose. So I'm going Floyd Mayweather to win by razor thin split decision. But no, good question. That would be an incredible fight. Uh, Noz Tajik says, if you were managing Joe Cordina, who would you be targeting next? How do you think he fares against the other world champions in the division? I almost feel like this is a, 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 a double question here. Who would I target next? Oscar Valdez. Reason being, yes, I know he doesn't have a belt, but Oscar Valdez is probably the biggest name in the division bar Joe Cordina. And it's about raising your profile. He's got a belt already, so you don't necessarily need to run to unifications. In terms of a world champion in the division, Navarati, because he is the killer in the division. He really is the one that could beat Joe Cordina. So Joe Cordina beating him, then that's it. You've, you've won the division, you can move on. Obviously, other champions in the division. Garcia is a good fighter as well. But for me, the fight next, Oscar Valdez. The fight in terms of unification, Navarati. But look, if you're Joe Cordina, you've put yourself in a position because of that big win. Um, what's this one? Abidjan 
Abidjan Anand. Uh, who's your favourite boxer of all time and your favourite MMA fighter of all time? Boxer, Muhammad Ali. Um, or Sugar Ray Leonard, it's close. Muhammad Ali. Mm, Muhammad Ali, just. MMA fighter, John Jones. I don't even know why I thought about that. John Jones, easily number one. You know, the reason I thought about it is because Conor McGregor, for about four years, was just sensational. Like, this guy could cut a promo better than anyone, but then he delivered as well. That, what, 12 and a half second knockout of Jose Aldo was the greatest thing I've ever seen in an, in an MMA ring or an octagon. It, it was incredible. But John Jones, just because of longevity, um, is, for me, the best. But Conor McGregor, for those four years, sensational. Sensational. Remember that bit where Jeremy Stevens is really going at him and he turns around and says, who the bleep is that guy? <laughs> Conor McGregor was just incredible. The schedule before we go on the zone for May, incredible. It really is. I feel like we've said so many big words, incredible, sensational, gigantic in this show, but really is. April was just, I mean, come on, value for money. May though, I fly out for Canelo versus John Ryder. I mean, that's that. So we fly out for that one. I then get back for KSI versus Joe Fournier, Misfits. And then I do a bit of Katie Taylor versus Chantel Cameron in Ireland, which I've been told has the best atmosphere in boxing. I don't know. I'm not sure. Could happen. And then we roll the dice for Lee Wood. He takes some Mauricio Lara again. So repeat, revenge, all that good stuff. So, I mean, come on, look at those. And there's other bits and bobs in between all that as well. But look, if you're a boxing fan, there's only one place to get your boxing fit because we have absolutely everything right here for you on The Zone. See you next week.